Our notes for today are about the period of industrial growth from the end of the Civil War in 1865 uh, through the rest of the century up to 1900. The textbook refers to this time period as a period of innovation and industry, um, and certainly it was, but not everything about it was so great. As we've been talking about, U.S. industry and business grew a tremendous amount between 1865 and 1900. For one, you had something called the Bessemer steel process, which uh, was a way of making steel um, of high quality that was also affordable. Um, it wasn't it, this wasn't the first time we ever figured out how to make steel. We could make it before, but it was just really expensive, and it took a long time. This Bessemer process um, produced very good steel, and, and we could do it a lot faster and a lot cheaper. During this time period, electricity begins to spread. So that leads to things like Edison's light bulb, um, electric refrigerators, sewing machines rather than sewing clothes by hand. Um, lots of new machines that tap into this electrical power. Railroads continue to be built, just like we talked about in the last chapter, right? Railroads uh, not only now connect uh, east to west, but more and more railroads are starting connect to connect major cities and connect all 50 states. Communication improves. Telegraph and telephone lines start to spread around the country, making communication instantaneous. No longer do you have to wait for a letter to go from east coast to west coast and take weeks. Instead, you can get someone on the phone on the other side of the country very quickly. This growth of industry also led to uh, even more advances in technology. In 1865, uh, the government issued about six thousand patents for new inventions. Sounds like a lot, and, and I guess it is, but not when you compare it to 1900. In 1900, there were over 24,000 patents issued, right? So quadruple the amount of patents were being issued. So new inventions were coming along at a very, very fast rate. These new inventions used electricity, right? And that included um, things like the automobile, the refrigerator, the telephone. Not everything about it was so great, though. Um, this rapid growth of industry also created a bunch of problems. Stronger companies tended to drive weaker companies out of business. So if you wanted to start up a business, it was very, very difficult if you were competing with a big, strong company. And then stronger companies tended to go after each other, right? And they either took each other out or they joined up together and worked together to create monopolies. Working conditions were usually pretty bad. That sometimes led to very violent strikes. In 1900, the average work week was 59 hours. Right? The average work week now is 40. Right? So this was uh, almost 150% of the work week we're used to today, um, 59 hours, and you only got paid on average $10 per week. So it was long hours and low pay and bad conditions. You had child labor, not only in factories, but even in mines. And on top of this, many jobs were dangerous. So you can see, right, that, that working conditions uh, weren't the best for American workers. But um, that didn't really seem to, to impact uh, the guys at the top, the, the big, powerful, successful businessmen. Um, and several of them became incredibly rich and powerful. People like J.P. Morgan and Andrew Carnegie, right? Um, Cornelius Vanderbilt, these are names that, that you still hear today, right? And, and some people called them captains of industry. But other people felt that they misused their power, that they used it badly, and gave them the nickname robber barons. So some of the things that they, they did that were 
negative, some of them would bribe politicians uh, to get them to pass laws that would be good for the business. They drove, worked very hard to drive competitors out of business. As we just talked about, workers had to deal with unsafe conditions. And sometimes workers who tried to improve their working conditions were fired um, and, and sort of blacklisted, right? So not everybody saw this rise of industry as a good thing. They saw these businessmen, these big successful businessmen, as what was called robber barons. So here's a political cartoon that goes along with that. Um, and if we kind of break this down, you notice, right, that um, the, the ocean's kind of hard to see, but in the bottom right-hand corner, it says hard times. So here's this, they're, they're on this ocean of hard times, and um, you've got way up high, safe from the hard times, are these millionaires, these, these businessmen um, who are... Uh, big and fat, right, sitting on top of their millions and millions of dollars. But what the cartoonist here is saying is they're doing that off of the backs of the laborers, the workers who are struggling to get by with $7 a week, $6 a week, $9 a week, bad conditions. So not everybody saw these businessmen as uh, good for America. The government eventually does step in and, and pass some laws to try to control these big businesses. Probably the best known of these laws is the Sherman Antitrust Act. And what that did is it outlawed monopolies and trusts, which were considered unfair business practices. Um, monopolies and trusts, as we discussed, are, are good for the businessman, but they're bad for the average American consumer. However, despite the fact that the government passed these such laws, um, there wasn't a tremendous effort to enforce it. So that was, um, you know, it's a, a step forward, but then maybe a step back as well. Some of the businessmen realized that they, they were coming across negatively. Um, and to, to try to improve their image, they decided that they would donate a lot of their money, right? They had millions and millions and millions. And so um, not all, but several of them um, decided to use that money uh, for things like charities and to help fund schools and build libraries for people and, and build hospitals and museums. So there were some positive things that came out of these uh, big, rich businessmen that some people saw as captains of industry and others saw as robber barons. But again, the, the big picture idea here during this period after the Civil War um, is, is a growing period of industry, a growing period of inventions and innovations in America. But it comes at a cost, um, primarily to uh, the average laborer, the average worker.